So let's take a look where I am. Um, on the instructions, I have done one, steps one through six in their entirety. And for once, I'm building the kit like the instructions call for, with the exception of putting the wheels on yet. The reason I've done that is uh, I'm gonna try something using magic tracks that I've seen others do. But I'm on step seven. And um, if you have, if you saw in the first installment, um, I have some notes here that uh, Patrick Schaefer um, translated for me from German. And it's broken down by steps and what parts are uh, changed or whatever. So let's kind of go through a little bit real quick. Um, Modify from, uh, let's see. For example, one of the things that um, is different on this kit is the March light. So the kit calls for ah, part G2, which is like one of those little three panel um, lights, tail lights, march light, whatever you call it. But in the um, notes, it says replace march light. A tubular was used on this stoog. So uh, I from what I've seen, there's like two ears this way facing back and there's like a glass tube in there. And I think it was kind of a blue color, but I'm not sure. The nice thing is, is this kit actually has it in the instructions, you know, the correct one. So it's easy to replace it. And that's what I did here. This is the mount. And then there's a clear part for that glass tube, which is right here. So I'm set. So that was an easy one to do. <clears throat> um, then on the hatch, on step seven, uh, it says remove rubber buffers, Aptaloon 177, remove them to make the hatch cover more horizontal when open. So that would be part G16. So all I did was I cut the bumper off. I left the actual mount itself because I would assume it was welded on. And um, I cut that off, and then what I'll do is I'll drill a hole here with my pin vise. Go ahead and do that while I'm talking about it. Choose a suitable drill bit. That one might be a little large. Let's go with 76. So I'll just go ahead and drill that out because I would assume, you know, the uh, that rubber grommet was held in place with, uh, you know, a screw or bolt or something. I mean, that would make sense to me. And just judging from the way it looked before I cut it off, uh, that would be the way it was done. <clears throat> so there's that. So that's where I am. I'm up to step seven. I'm assembling the um, the hatch and all that kind of stuff. Um, the photo wedge has been pretty good so far. I haven't had too much trouble. Some of the parts I kept knocking off, like these little parts here are very delicate. So care is needed with those. Um, another part that I had a real hassle with was the, um, the cable. And this cable here, no problem because I didn't use the one from the kit. The one from the kit is a real stiff um, steel and it just was really hard to manipulate. The super glue just would not stick to it. So it was a real hassle. I was able to get this side, but after wrestling around with it, I thought I got to do something else. So I had some other cable here and it looks, you know, really close. It actually looks a little bit better than stuff. Um, 
dragon supplies, but I used that on this side <clears throat> and it was much easier to manipulate. I was able to basically uh, put it all in place, bend it all the way it needed to be, and then everything kind of fit into place and I was able to glue it down okay. Um, so, yeah. The cable's nice and it would probably work for some applications, but on this particular one, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here, you can see that it has some pretty distinct curves and kinks and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and getting those sharp curves to fit was tough. Also, <clears throat> <clears throat> it says 130 millimeter and 135 millimeter. So since the part is blue, I assumed that was what was needed, 130 millimeter. Um, so I cut the cable, put it in, and it was too short, like quite a bit too short. So I thought, okay, well maybe they mean 130 millimeter uh, from was it too short or too long? It might have been really too long. And so I did it 130 millimeter from the tip of the cable uh, eye to the tip of the cable eye, the, the loop part. And it was the wrong length. So I don't know where they get this 130 millimeter because I tried every way possible to get it fit because there are pin holes here and here that these cable ends are supposed to fit in. So finally I just scratched that. Uh, laid my cable out, got it to where, you know, it was the right length here to fit inside the hole on the end of the uh, cable ferrule here, and cut it, then inserted it. It's kind of a hassle, but in the end it worked out okay. So that is where I am. Uh, the only other thing I've done of any note is the periscopes. Um, I used little bits of uh, Tamiya masking tape. Uh, I just cut a real thin strip the size of the lens of the periscopes here and uh, put those in place. And then once I paint everything, I can peel them off. It's a method I've used before and it works really well, so that should be good. So anyway, I'm going to continue on with... Uh, step seven here with the hatches uh, start working on the upper hull superstructure and uh, come back and see what we got so this is this is basically what I have so far all the suspension the rear plate here uh, the return rollers and such like so so far so good all right so let's take a quick look at where I am this point so I've got the hatches and the gun shield um, in place the commander's cupola is finished I have um, I've installed the uh, the radios into the inner sponsons, and that's pretty much that. So I'm going to set that stuff aside. I'm not actually going to install these in here until I paint them uh, because I want to uh, spray the inside spray and then paint the radios get everything kind of detailed before I actually put it together um, and I don't want to do all that until I'm ready to do the interior of the superstructure with the floor plate and the gun and all of that so I can move on to step 11 All right, so next thing to do is put together these spare road wheels, start working on these uh, engine 
deck hatches covers whatever you want to call them and all that so 11 12 13 is what I want to do next okay let's see here so I've got the rear deck complete with all of the parts and photo etch and I've got the upper uh, upper hull superstructure done um, I haven't glued this in place yet uh, but I'll be gluing that in place and then I've got this front um, the front part where the uh, <clears throat> access hatches are for the uh, I guess it's the steering brakes and stuff, the transmission, whatever you want to call it. That's done. But there are two um, indentations in the front there, obviously for different versions of this kit. And it's supposed to be filled in. So I filled that in. And I don't want to uh, install the doors and everything just yet until I get those filled completely and then sanded but what I've used to fill that is my uh, sprue goo here which I've talked about before but it's basically to me extra thin mixed with uh, cut up plastic but um, <clears throat> So I fill those in and I'm going to let, they're not completely full. I just put some in there and let it settle in. I'm going to let that cure really well. Then I'll put some more because as, excuse me, as it dries, it does seem to shrink a little bit or settle more. So I'm, I want to make sure I get plenty in there and that it uh, cures properly. So I'm going to do it in layers. So while that is uh, drying, curing, whatever you want to call it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip over to step 15, 16, and 17, which is the uh, the interior floors and the gun and mount. So I'm going to start working on that, and we'll come back and take a look. All right, so I'm getting ready to... Um, do some priming first and that's primarily going to be on the inside of the fighting compartment uh, lower hull upper superstructure the sides with the radios uh, the interior of the um, I'll probably just do the whole uh, or most of the hatch well I'll do the inside of the hatch no I'll do the inside of this uh, the cupola I will do the gun platform here and uh, you know, this seat that goes in the between the floor well it goes right there let's just make it easy it goes right there so that's what I'm gonna uh, so I'm gonna spray first primer so what I'm using for primer is the um, Ammo by Mig one shot primer, which is the same stuff, just rebottled as Steinal Res. Why do I have both? I don't know because. Uh, but here's something important about this stuff. As you can see, there's a big glop of stuff on here. This stuff really separates if you don't use it for a while. So it's essential that you get that stuff mixed up. And here is what I do to do it. I use this to me a paint stirring stick first to break it all up from the bottom. And get into the the uh, inside edge where the side of the bottle meets the bottom to really get that stuff loosened up and I just drag it on the sides to get as much as I can off of there wipe off the stir stick like that and then I use my Badger stirring device. 
Scrape it on the bottom. Really agitate it good. To hopefully break up any of the chunks. Drain that off. Clean that off. Then, <clears throat> as one last added measure, make sure that lid screwed on tight. Shake the tarnation out of it. Then I'll pour some in my bottle here. If I get this lid open. Alright, so I got that. Cap that up. Got my pressure set at uh, 18. All right, so here are the parts all primed. So I'm gonna let that cure up really good. And uh, then I'll come back and what I'm gonna do on the interior parts, I'm gonna throw some hairspray on it before I paint it the German interior color. So we'll let that sit for a bit. So I figured where all, all my uh, primers drying I would work on the tracks so I was having trouble deciding if I wanted to use the uh, magic tracks that came with the kit or if I wanted to use the uh, frugal model tracks these here because I don't know if I mentioned it before, but what I'm having to do is I'm having to drill out all of these tracks. I'm having to drill out the uh, the pins like this and like this. And it's not hard. It's just time consuming. And it kind of wears on the thumb and forefinger a bit. But the tracks are nice. They're pretty clean for the most part. Some of them have a little bit of flash on the inside of the guide horn. But I mean, it's it comes out super easy just using my multi-purpose blade here. The one I don't care that it's all mangled and dull. But it's working pretty good. And, um, whoa. One thing, I, the tracks, if, if it came with it, I lost it. But usually there's a roll of wire that you use to make the... Uh, track pins and I probably wouldn't have used it anyway um, one person suggested I don't remember who it was but suggested using staples straightened staples and those work pretty good too I've used them before on um, 
some Sherman tracks I did by Frugal Model. And I decided to use these brass, extra brass rod that came with some Kaizen tracks that I've used in the past. And the thing I like about this is it's like, it, uh, it's really straight. Um, it's not, you know, pre-coiled in the box or anything, but uh, they're really straight. And when I cut them off, it kind of forms like a little flat spot which really helps to hold the pin in place whenever I put it in the hole. So that is the reason I'm using these. And they're easy to cut off, they're brass, they're strong, etc. So anyway, I'm gonna work on this while the uh, primer dries. <clears throat> All right, here's where it sits. So I put the final filler on there, and in hindsight, I really should have cut out some little squares of styrene and glued them down inside of those holes and then put this, but I didn't, so I'm having to do a little bit of extra work. That's okay. Uh, I've got some hairspray sprayed in here so I can do some ch uh, chipping. And these here are all ready to be painted with my German interior color. So I'm going to load up the old airbrush and get going on that. All right, now that I've got all this painted, I can start doing some detail painting. And so what I'm going to do is using my NATO black, I am going to paint these radios and once they're dry then I can do a little bit of dry brushing on them to bring out the, all the knobs and all that kind of stuff then um, I'm going to use uh, a bit of sponge and do some chipping along the edges and stuff like that just to make it look a beat up a little bit then I can do some washes all right so here's where it sits it is uh, the construction with the exception of the wheels which is just a matter of sticking them on there and then the tracks um, it is done and ready for paint um, so far there hasn't been any trouble uh, with the assembly on this thing um, there's a few things I had to put clamps on to kind of hold together to hold really tight but you know no big deal so the only things I have left to uh, assemble and again that's going to happen after paint um, is the or at least the initial paint the desert yellow I'll probably put stuff uh, in place for the um, whitewash but these have to be put here uh, but again I don't want to do that until I'm ready to uh, till after I get the paint on it I put some spare track back here, um, so I have some leftover tracks from this, and I'll paint those along with this, and then uh, once I get everything painted up, I can start with a little bit of weathering, and I'm probably going to weather the upper and lower parts separately because, according to the photos that I've, or you know, the uh, references I've seen, including this right here, it's a pretty good reference, um, underneath here is all just it's just the desert yellow it's just dirty and everything else the wheels the drive sprocket the return rollers the idler those have been whitewashed like the other parts of the uh the vehicle so that is the plan so i think i'll call this the end of this video on the um, Panzer Jaeger Tank Hunter group build. So that's it, part two complete. So next time when I come back, um, hopefully I'll have some primer and uh, get ready to go for paint. So as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and I will see you all later.